In this video, I'm going to describe a simple pattern for hormonal flow. It doesn't work for all the hormones, but it should work for a few of them. If you have questions afterwards, make sure you email me, contact me through my website, or on Twitter. Okay, so this pattern works for only a few of the endocrine glands or endocrine organs. It works for the gland that's in the neck. That's going to be the thyroid gland. It also works for a gland that's on top of the kidneys. That gland is the adrenal gland. And then also the gonads, which are your sex organs. For the male, that's going to be the testes. And for the female, that's going to be the ovaries. And this is how the analogy works. Think about a company. In a company, you have a president. The, pres, the president gives an order down to the next in command to the vice president. The vice president then gives orders or commands down to the supervisors. And then the supervisors are going to relay that information to the rest of the body or the rest of the workers uh, around. So how does that relate to the human body? The president in the human body is a gland in the brain, and that is called the hypothalamus. The hypothalamus is going to send chemical messages, known as hormones, down to the gland right beneath it, and that's going to be what? That is going to be the pituitary gland, and the pituitary gland has two divisions. What are those divisions? They are the anterior and the posterior. In this analogy, we're going to focus on the anterior, the front half. And then after that, we call the next set of organs target organs. And target organs, I'm just going to abbreviate that right here as TO. The thyroid is a target organ. The adrenal gland is a target organ. And the testes and ovaries are target organs. So these are your target organs up here. So what are the hormones? Out of the hypothalamus, you get RH. RH stands for releasing hormones. So if we're going to talk about the thyroid gland, this is going to be thyrotropin releasing hormone. The adrenal gland, we're going to have corticotropin releasing hormone. And the sex organs, because they are called gonads, is going to be gonadotropin releasing hormone. So anytime you see releasing hormone, releasing hormone, releasing hormone, think of the hypothalamus. Think about the president, right? He's going to release orders down to the next in command. And you can kind of take the P, maybe the P kind of looks like an R, whatever works for you. Then the next hormone here is going to be thyroid stimulating hormone coming out of the anterior pituitary. For the adrenal gland, it's going to be adrenal corticotropic, the T for tropic hormone. And here we're going to have two. We're going to have FSH and we are going to have LH also coming out of the anterior pituitary. Again, follicle stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone. When TSH gets to the thyroid gland, the thyroid gland being the target organ, it's gonna stimulate the release of T3 and T4. T4 also known as thyroxine. And then these hormones are gonna take effect on the rest of the body. For the adrenal gland, ACTH is specifically gonna stimulate the release of cortisol from the adrenal gland. Cortisol coming out of the zona fasciculata of the adrenal cortex. For more info on the adrenal gland, watch my video on the adrenal gland. FSH is gonna have a different effect because we have different sexes. We have the male sex and we have the female. To remember this sign as female, just think about it. It kinda of looks like a little handheld mirror that a female would use this definitely looks like a male and you can figure out why. Anyways, FSH, what that's going to do in the female first is F, follicle. It's going to stimulate the maturation and the development of the follicles. In the male, the follicles would be the sperm. LH in the male, I'll bring the arrow down a little bit more, is going to stimulate the production of testosterone. LH in the female it's very important to know that it stimulates ovulation, which is the release of an ovum halfway through the menstrual cycle. Also, the production of progesterone, amongst other things. Two last things to discuss. I'm going to put some numbers here. Three, two, and one. This means tertiary, secondary, and primary. The more important ones are the secondary and the primary. 
This is important when we discuss pathology. For example, let's say there is a problem in the thyroid gland. Let's say the thyroid gland is not working. If it's not working, this would be primary, because it's at the level of the target organ right here, primary hypothyroidism. If it was producing a lot, it would still be primary, but it would be hyperthyroidism, hyper versus hypo. But I'll make a different video describing the pathology of the endocrine glands. If the problem was up here, let's say the pituitary gland had a problem, then it would be a secondary hypo or hyperthyroidism. The last thing to discuss with this analogy is let's say, all right, the president, he's going to give orders to the VP. The VP is going to give orders to the supervisors, just like here, right? TRH is going to stimulate TSH, which is going to stimulate these. But let's say these workers are overworked. Let's say they're doing way too much work. They can't handle it. There's way too much hormones being produced. So what are they going to do? They're going to want to tell, you know, the people above them in command to stop. Stop letting us work. So we're going to go back up here and tell the president, excuse me, the vice president, stop. These two arrows mean stop. Stop. I don't want to work anymore. And also tell the president just in case the VP doesn't get the message to stop. That's what's happening here. If we have too much of T3 and T4, it's going to inhibit TSH, and it's going to also inhibit TRH. We call this feedback, right? We're giving feedback to our supervisors, but because we're causing it to stop, we call it negative feedback. There is also positive feedback as well, but I'll discuss that in another video. Thank you, and if you have any questions, make sure you email me. Contact me through my website or on Twitter. Take care.